Hi, I'm Emily Epp, Manager of Communications at the Caribou Regional District. This is today's video update for August the 9th. Um, here again with Mike. Thanks for joining us, Mike. Uh, we're going to start with the weather, if you could give us an update. Certainly. So uh, the weather is changing, folks. I know that uh, it's still very warm and dry out there. We had talked earlier that yesterday might be the warmest day we, we were going to see. That's not the case at all. Um, it's very warm today again once you get out of the smoke. In fact, the forecaster told me this morning that if there was no smoke, we'd be pushing 40 degrees today, high 38, 37 degrees. So still very, very warm weather out there. Uh, fortunately for us today, and it is about four o'clock in the afternoon here, um, it stayed smoky for most of the day. A uh, little bit tricky to fly our aircraft, but we've been getting by, we've been getting them out there and doing our work, and it has kept the temperature uh, relatively cool but still extremely warm it's uh you know pushing 30 degrees even under the smoke so some increased fire behavior activity again today as we move out across the uh caribou fire center there isn't smoke on all the fires so anywhere you see uh sunshine hitting the ground once again increased fire behavior looking outwards a little bit uh, we do know there's a change coming we've been talking about it uh, over the last few days we are looking at a low pressure system that's going to come across the fire center starting from the west obviously it'll be a series of two small bands that are going to come in what we don't know is how much precipitation we're going to get but we do know we're going to get some wind the wind is going to switch to the southeast which will push our fire in directions they haven't been growing recently um, so that could cause some changes out there it's definitely going to cause our fires to grow we think these fronts are going to move across the fire center relatively slowly which means the winds might be a little lower but we are going to see gusts in the west uh, west part of the caribou fire center up into the 40 40 kilometer an hour range so that is certainly going to challenge our fire crews uh, there's no doubt about that it's going to challenge our guards and our contingency contingency lines as well so prepping here for the next two days planning for the weekend, looking for some increased fire behavior. Not sure if we're going to get much precipitation with that. Thanks, Mike. So yesterday's video, we Mike touched on almost all the fires of note in the Caribou Fire Center. So uh, today we thought uh, there hasn't been much significant changes since yesterday's update, but uh, just wanted to get an update on the Elephant Hill fire today. Yeah, just very generally, Elephant Hill still continues to grow. It's one of the most challenging fires we have in the province. I mean, these are all large fires, but Elephant Hill particularly, it's now almost 120,000 hectares. Um, we are continuing to use controlled ignition operations to try to slow and stop that fire. It's one of the best techniques we have. Again, make a guard line, burn the fuel off between the guard and the fire, try to slow the head of the fire down. Uh, those were planned uh, for yesterday. Unfortunately, smoke hampered our aircraft ability. So we, we, when we're doing controlled ignition, we have to have aircraft available to cool the ground, uh, put the fire out as it burns it from the guard line and also make sure that if we have any escapements we're ready to go and frankly yesterday those conditions just weren't there mm -hmm. so some of our controlled conditions were uh, held back a little bit. Thanks Mike. Um, and another question we've been getting a lot today um, and in recent past is uh, people are wondering why may is my area still on evacuation order? Yeah, so of course the BC Wildfire Service makes recommendations based on fire behavior to Emily and the Caribou Regional District mm -hmm. and then they make their decision whether to place an order or an alert. But uh, obviously if you're right next to a very large active wildfire and we just don't think that's safe for you to be there, we're going to make that recommendation to them and they, uh, they may put an order in play. If you are downwind, for example, of a fire that's growing to the east and you're on the east side, we're going to look outwards and say, you know, that might be challenging for us. It's risky for folks to be there. So we're going to uh, put it, recommend it on order to you folks. Anytime the drought codes are high, our risk tolerance goes down a little bit. We know that the fire behavior can pick up. Everybody around these communities has seen what can happen when it's dry and windy. Um, so as a result, we have to plan for those kind of things. Also with the weather event coming through like we might see, we will be looking very carefully at that. If we think we're going to get excessive wind that might push a fire in a different direction than it's been growing, uh, we'll be uh, trying to analyze what that growth might look like over time figuring out what the risk might be and then making the recommendation accordingly. And I guess finally, uh, what I would like to say is that it's not always about the fact that you're next to a fire or you're downwind from a fire or uh, near a fire that might grow into your area. But if we don't feel that the highway corridor is protected to a point where we could safely get folks out of there, we, we, we may come and recommend an order or an alert for those types of areas as well. So it's not always just about being next to a fire. Sometimes it's about what would the challenges be to uh, protect life and property without the highway corridor 
or perhaps without a hospital that could function or some other piece of critical infrastructure. So those are some of the reasons, Emily. Yep, that's great. Thanks, Mike. And yeah, we work closely, the Caribou Regional District, other local governments work closely with the BC Wildfire Service and we evaluate those decisions daily and uh, work together to make sure that people are safe. And we also understand that people want to get home, but most important is that it's safe for people to return. And we do make those recommendations to First Nations uh, groups as well. Uh, they're a very important part of our, our uh, infrastructure. You know, there are governments that we recognize and we try to ensure that we're talking to them and uh, making sure they're very aware and, and they're able to uh, make their own decisions if they feel safe or not and uh, make their own determinations on order and alert. Yep, the First Nations governments make the decisions for orders and alerts for their areas as well. So I think that sums up our video update for today. Um, Mike is going to be going on a break for a few days, but uh, stay tuned for more videos. Uh, we'll talk to you again tomorrow.